Hey guys, Obelisk here again. Uh, welcome to another installment to my Day Out class overview video series. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Eldritch class on Hibernia. Um, we're going to talk about spells, specs, things of the sort. Same old, same old. If you've seen any other uh, versions of these videos for other classes, you know the deal. So let's go ahead and hop into game here. We're on my Eld. Let's see. My Eld right now is Light Spec. Um, all the spec lines in Eld are actually pretty useful. Um, Two in particular, Light and Void, are the most popular, but the Mana spec line can be useful. Um, I don't think this is as good as the other ones, but we'll get into it a little bit. Um, but I'm going to show you the Void and Light spec. Um, I have two Elves here, both specced. Um, obviously, one's, this one's Void, or this one's Light, the other one's Void. But first, we're going to get into the baseline spells. Um, we'll talk about those, and then we'll start talking a little bit more about the, uh, the spec lines. So let's hop into the Way of the Void baseline. Um, there are literally two spells in this. Um, you have a little cold baseline DD, 179 damage. Nothing too special here. I don't think you'll ever really use this. Um, I don't know, probably not. And then you have a bolt. Um, bolt's nice just for its bolt range damage. Um, you can, I, I like to use bolt sometimes because by the t if you cast the bolt first and then you cast the DD behind it, they'll hit around the same time so you get a nice little spike damage burst there let me make my windows a little bit bigger and font size bigger so you can see okay so yeah so i like doing this little number where i i bolt and then i hit a dd and they hit around the same time um that's fun uh let's see so that's the way of the void out of the way over and done then we have way of the light which is the light spec or baseline there are three spells in this you have a 179 delve heat nuke, and this is actually going to be useful. You'll be using this, you know, every now and then, especially on uh, your light eld. Um, you'll use this when you're in a group with a, a channer, and the channer's mana spec. So he's going to be debuffing cold damage and heat damage. Um, but a lot of the times, if you're in like a like a three caster hip group, you're going to be with a a mana channer, which is your main assist, your debuffer. And then you're going to be the light eld, and you'll probably have a light mentalist. Um, the channer and the mentalist both nuke heat. You're the only one that nukes cold. So sometimes the channer is only going to be able to get one resist debuff off. He might not be able to get the cold debuff off. He'll only get heat. So if that's the case, you'll use this baseline spell. It's a it's going to be lower value than your spec line um, DD, but if it's debuffed, if heat's debuff and cold's not, you're going to be hitting harder with the heat debuff or heat nuke. So have this on the bar, ready to go. Um, just in case Channer only gets one debuff off, not being heat. You also get a baseline dex debuff. Really good. Use this on things like uh, healers, casters, anything like things like Valkyries, even because their damage is half dex. Um, also, it'll slow their heals down. Things like Savages, even because their damage is half dex as well. But you're going to want to try to get this off on support and other casters if you can. Um, it combos well with the dex quick debuff you'll get in light. We'll talk about that a little bit later. You also get a stun. It's a nine second stun, I believe. Classic um, Hib stun nuke character here. Uh, calls a lot of tears in the past, so cool spell. Anyway, this uh, 2.5 second cast time, 1500 range, nine second stun. You stun it and then you nuke it and it dies, hopefully, if all things go well. You don't. You probably don't want to stun targets that you know have uh, determination and stoicism because the stun's literally going to last a second on those. Um, so it's not worth giving those guys stun immunity. But if you can stun you like a healer or some sort of caster or something that doesn't have debt, go for it. It's going to be great. And that's Way of Light. Now we have Way of Mana. And this is going to have your shields, your uh, armor factor shield. Keep that up. You're going to get hit for a billion. And then your ABS shield. Again, keep that up. You're going to get hit, su hit super hard. And then you have your blade turn, um, absorbs one melee hit, um, cast it whenever you're done with the fight or something. You also get a base strength debuff. Um, use this on tanks that you want to kind of hurt their damage. If they're um, strength type tanks, pretty much every tank is affected by uh, the strength stat. So it'll be a, a good bet there. Another, okay, you get this little crappy damage shield. Don't even worry about it. Don't even put this on your bar. Not even worth it. All it's going to do is break roots. Um, anyway, moving on, you have this. This is a really cool addition. This what this is what makes Void Elds work well. 
um, you get this 179 delve energy damage in your mana line. So it's gonna allow Void Elves to debuff energy and then be able to um, debuff for themselves. So, and also debuff for their friends, like other like Mentalism Mints and Animus and Banshees and things like that. So this is gonna be super useful in the Void spec line. Maybe not so useful in the Light spec line, unless you're with a Void Elf for some reason, then you might consider using this. Um, but anyway, so that's the three baseline spells or baseline lines um, for Eldritches. Next, we're going to move on to just the light spec. We're 46 light. Yeah, 46 light. Um, so what that gives you, the main thing is the big 209 nuke. I just thought it, there we go. 209 cold damage, um, 2.8 second cast time. It's called Shatter Doom. It's, it's an iconic spell to me. I love seeing like the little little blue um, aura around the Eldritch when he nukes. It's just, it's a classic hard hitting um, head spec nuke spell. Um, so use that for sure. Especially if your Channer, if you're in a group with a Channer, gets a cold debuff off, then you're gonna hit really hard. Um, next thing you get is this great Dex quick debuff. And it's an AoE Dex quick debuff. This is great to use on pretty much everything. Um, you're gonna wanna use this on tanks because it's gonna slow down their swing speed pretty significantly. You're especially gonna wanna use this on things like Valkyries that do dex damage. Um, Spears, half dex, half strength. Or um, you know things like, uh, like Thrust Mercs if you fight those, Reavers, um, you know, pretty much anything. Even things that aren't dex based, it's just gonna nerf their, their swing speed. Especially if you have a Warden in the back with PVT. If you can dex quick debuff them, and they're swinging against PVT, they're gonna get a lot of hits absorbed by PVT, and they're only gonna land like one or two swings um, every, you know, every between every PVT swing, PVT hit. So it's really nice, especially if you have a hasty buff in the back. Also, if you have a hasty buff in this deck, quick debuff on a tank, it's devastating. Um, light channers, I believe, get a really nice deck quick debuff, but um, champs, all, all sorts of stuff. Um, anyway. You also definitely want to use this on healers, supports, things like that. It's going to slow down. You're going to want to use this and the base dex debuff. It's going to take their decks down so low. Um, really nerf their cast speed. So use this on anything that casts, um, pretty much everything. Um, you want to use this on other bad guy casters, bad guy supports, tanks, everything. Really good spell. One of the uh, one of the more powerful spells in the game is a, is a dex quick debuff, in my opinion. Then you get this really nice 65% near sight. Um, 2300 range, super long range, two second cast time, so it casts super fast. This is a great tool to interrupt. One, because it's a fast cast time and it's long range. You don't have to be anywhere close to the person to interrupt them. So you can interrupt things like cabs and sorks in their backfield while you're in your backfield in a lot of cases. Also, it applies a near sight effect, so they have to be super close to be able to even cast spells until it's cured. Um, near sights are strong because one, it rupts the caster you're using it on. Um, if they get near sighted, they obviously can't cast unless they're super close to someone, and it forces their support to stop and he, uh, cure it. So it's kind of a chain reaction spell. So it makes uh, multiple people in the group do something. Um, so that's nice. And then with this spec line, and you probably won't get a red AoE mes. Um, you can go higher light and get it if you want, but you get this low duration AoE mes. Um, it's good if you need a quick mez. Um, it's not going to last very long. It's only 26 seconds. So I wouldn't use this if you need a long duration mez on someone. Have the mentalist or bard or something do that. But if you need like a quick, like a mez, it's kind of an emergency deal. This is this will suffice. But you don't want to be using it to like long term, long duration mez something out. That's not going to be your job. And then you also get this cool little uh, spirit debuff. And what this is good with is you can spirit debuff for your mez. And I believe bards, question mark, do they do, is there a mez spirit? I'm pretty sure it is. Anyway, it's, you'll be using that to debuff for uh, CC. Um, druids, their roots spirit. So it's kind of a combo deal. Um, if you can spirit debuff, it's instant, by the way, so you don't even have to worry about casting it. So if you can spirit debuff a target that's about to get mez by like a bard or a rude by a druid, 
then that's going to be really nice because it's going to make that mes or root or whatever it is last a little bit longer. Um, so it's just a nice way to combo. It might be a little difficult. It's something that your bard's going to have to call, hey, I'm about to mes the armsman. And then you just turn around and instant spirit debuff it. It's not super hard. It just takes a little bit of coordination. You can also spirit debuff and then mez. It's going to make your mez last a bit longer. So that's nice. Nice little bonus. And there's, there's really no reason not to use this if you are mezzing because it is instant. So go ahead and do that. And also if you see a, a druid about to root something, throw it on it. Um, just a nice way to help your, uh, your CC last longer. And that's going to do it for light. It's a super basic uh, spec line. You essentially get, you know, four or five spells in it. And yeah, that's that's it. Um, I subspec mana. I'm 28 mana. And the reason I do that is because I get this cool oops, strength con debuff. It's an AoE strength con. Um, I use this whenever I'm about to nuke something down if I want to damage it because it's going to take away their con, which is going to essentially give me free damage. Uh, by taking away their, their head pool. So use that if you're nuking something. Or if you want to debuff a tank strength even more, you can use this and the base strength spell and really get a lot of strength taken away. So think about using that. It does share a reuse timer with your dex quick debuff, so you're going to have to choose. Um, the next thing I like is this disease. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. It's an AoE disease, super nice. Um, disease is always good because it um, has the healing effectiveness that they receive. So instead of getting healed for 600, they'll only get healed for 300. So when you're about to nuke something down, say the channer stuns something or the minimalist stuns something and the channer debuffs it, uh, before you start nuking, it's always a good idea in my opinion to throw a disease and then start nuking because the healer's gonna have to heal it or it's probably gonna die. And if they're diseased, their heals get cut in half or they have to cure a disease, also slows them, which is super nice. It's a great way to kind of help peel. Um, I like keeping things diseased as often as I can. It's just useful. Uh, the next cool thing you get is this low level snare nuke, AoE snare nuke. And you can use this to like, if someone has like five earth pets on them, you can like use this a couple times and clear them. Um, not the best clear, but it's mainly used to snare. I like using this to snare because it's a 40% snare that lasts a little while. Um, the, the main combo I like to use is I like to um, throw a AoE disease down if there's like a few tanks or even one tank, it doesn't really matter. Disease them and then snare nuke them. And it's going to it's gonna be a nice little peel for someone. If they're root immune, the snare nuke's not going to work. So don't worry about it if they're root immune. But uh, yeah, it's a nice little deal. You also get this uh, this low level root. It's 44 seconds. It's not the longest root in the world, but you can debuff for it. If you remember, um, it's spirit damage. So you can use your instant spirit debuff. You get a nice little debuff root. It's not the longest root in the world, but it'll do in a lot of cases, especially with that spirit debuff. So... Um, other than that, you get a nice little PV. I use this popping stealthers that they're around me. I'll use that. Um, if I have like three or four earth pets on me, I'll quick cast a uh, PV. It'll one shot if it doesn't resist. Or if a druid has a bunch of earth pets on them, I'll run over and PV it. Um, if it's one or two pets, I'll probably just nuke it from range. One, your high level DD is not going to have as much of a chance to resist as your level uh, 26 PVOE. But if there's a bunch of pets, it's not efficient to like single nuke all of them down. So you can just get rid of them with one or two P base probably. Um, and that's pretty much it for my um, sub spec line. And then avoid, I get, I get nothing. But uh, I'll, I'll go over a little bit more of the mana spec line. Once I get done talking about the void spec line, all you get is higher level versions of all these things. You also get a single target snare nuke, but I don't use that at all on my light out. But, uh, that pretty much does it for this spec line that I have. Can't think of anything else. Um, so I'll go over to my uh, Void Eld, which is a little bit different. We'll talk about the Void line and kind of the role that this guy plays. Uh, mostly, the uh, the Light Eld is going to be there for assist nukes, um, whereas the Void Eld is going to be the MA. It's going to be the main debuffer. So we have Void Mastery. And what we get here, okay, first off, we get a cool bolt, a hard hitting bolt. And you know, you can double bolt people, so you got your baseline bolt and your spec line bolt. Great. Um it's, I don't think the delves as high as a wizard, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure the wizard's quite a bit higher. 
Let me, let me just check to make sure what the wizard DD is or wizard bolt. Yeah, wizard bolt's 331 delve, so you're not going to hit it as hard as a wizard with the bolt. But regardless, it's a nice little way to, to um, apply some damage. Bolt casters and stuff like that hits them harder. Um, anyway, the main spells you get in this line, this energy debuff, yep, and then this body debuff. Okay. So remember earlier we saw this in the mana baseline, we had this baseline energy nuke. So here's here's your here's what you're gonna be doing most of the time in fights. If you're with a mentalist and a void eld or any energy nuking class, even Veil Walkers have that energy life tap, things like that. You're gonna wanna cast an energy debuff. That's gonna take away 50% energy resist from the target and it lasts eight seconds. So you energy debuff and then you use your baseline energy nuke right here. So you'll be hitting pretty hard. You're going to be hitting against very low resist. And you're also going to be allowing your um, your mentalist or your Bellwalker or Animus or whatever, this, anything that's using energy, to nuke a lot harder as well. So you'll, you'll be calling targets a lot of times. You'll throw out the debuff, maybe a stun, and then you'll nuke. Um, then you have this body debuff. It's a 50% body debuff. Same concept as the energy debuff, except for it actually lasts a lot longer. It's a 15-second duration debuff. Um, this is great when you have Animus on your team, like um, Arb, Arb Animus. Or you have a Banshee on your team, that nuke body. Um, you're going to want to double debuff. So a lot of the times what I do, if I'm if I'm the only energy nuker, which is unlikely because you'll probably have a Mentalism Mint, um, you'll debuff body first maybe. if Or if you know your Animus is going to get free, or your Banshee is going to get free, and he's going to blow something up, Maybe throw out a body debuff. You can even quick cast it if you're erupted. If, like, say you and the mentalist, you're, the two energy nukers are erupted, and you see the animist or banshee's wide open, just quick cast a body debuff, and then let the animist nuke, and it'll do a lot of damage. Um, but most of the time, what I do is I, I nuke, I energy debuff, then body debuff, and then I nuke. Um, it kind of depends on your group setup, which debuff you want to cast first. Because if you get interrupted after the first cast, you need to have the most important debuff out already. So it kind of depends on who's open and how many of what nukers you have. Um, but it's that's kind of a uh, a strategy that you're going to have to figure out based on your, your group setup and what's going on at that current moment in the fight. Um, anyway, so we'll go into other spells you get. You get this uh, just AOE DD. Great for killing third pets, things like that. Zo pets, whatnot. It's a pretty hard 158 damage AOE cold DD. It should one or two shot um, earth pets. So use that on those dudes. Um, then you get like a ground target area of effect. Um, probably useful in like keep sieges and stuff. Not super useful in like 8v8s or open field RVR. But um, all you need to do is put down a ground target and then. You can you can not even be in line of sight. Like you can hide behind this rock, which I don't know if this rock affects line of sight, but we'll see. And then you can throw your little DD there, so that's nice, especially in like siege situations. So it's a nice little ability there. And that's let's see what's here. Is that pretty much it? Yeah, that's that's it for void really. Um, you also get a spirit debuff, but. You don't spec high enough void, I guess, to get the higher level spirit debuff. Um, there's really no reason to, unless you want to like. This is an instant like the void or the light spec, so you actually have to cast it. So, if you wanted to debuff for a bard mez, you're gonna have to actually cast that. It's pretty clunky because if the bard mezes before this lands, it's actually gonna break it. I'm pretty sure. Whereas I don't know if the instant one breaks. I'd imagine it probably does, but. The instant, actually, the instant debuff shouldn't interrupt. Let's test it real quick. Do a challenge. Let's see. Do accept. So let's just cast some. Okay, so yeah, so this doesn't interrupt, um, whereas the other thing does. Let's actually see how long this mez lasts, this light spec mez. So it's gonna last for 40 seconds with when I'm spirit debuffed. It, it, okay, so the instant spirit debuff breaks the mez. So you gotta be careful that you don't accidentally spirit debuff too late. 
like say the bard's like, I'm going to mez the healer. And you're like, okay, dude, I'll help you mez or debuff it. So your mez lasts longer. And then you spirit debuff after the mez lands. That's just going to break that mez. So be very careful that you land that spirit debuff before. Um, so it breaks mezes, but it does not interrupt. As you can see, I got spirit debuff, but I'm still casting. Whereas casted debuffs definitely interrupts. As you can see, my eld's struggling to cast. Anyway. So that's just an interesting little tidbit. Be very careful with the light spec spirit debuff. Um, Cause you could mess up and break CC, especially mezzes. Roots will be fine. You can you can uh, resist debuff over a root and it's not gonna do anything. Um, okay, also in this line, you gonna subspec mana. You're, you'll go what, 21 mana, I guess. I haven't, I actually haven't looked at the specs too much. This is just a friend's um, L I logged in, so I don't know. Let's let's look at the character planner real quick and see if this is the right spec even. Let's explore this a little bit. Let's see Eld. Where's Eld? There it is. Okay, so we want to get the. Let's get the bolt. Yeah, let's get the level forty-seven bolt. We're gonna want a near sight at least. So let's go. Where's the near sight? Ten. Let's go at least ten light. Let's see what we can get here. We can get an AoE disease, okay. Do I have AoE disease in the spec line? I should. Yeah, okay, so with this spec he has an AoE disease, but can we get anything really else? We can get a better root, or we can get a better near sight. So I guess at this point you have to choose so right now I'm 47 uh, light on this character planner thing, as you can see here. I went at least 10 light, or sorry, 47 void, way of the clip, sorry. So 47 void, at least 10 light for the uh, the near sight right here. That's a gray near sight. And then I also went um, at least 16 uh, mana, which is um, way of the moon, for the, uh, the AoE disease. You also get a strength con debuff. It's a low level one. But I guess you can, yeah, you can go 18 for the higher level strength con debuff. And then what you have to decide is, do you want higher level near sight? So it goes from 25% effective range to 35% between the two levels. And also obviously the resist rate's a little bit better. Or do you want the higher level root? So it goes from a 23 second root to a uh, 44 second root. I would probably go something like this. Uh, let's see. I would go something like that, I think, because you get you get a decent dex quick debuff. It's not great by any means, but it's not that bad. You get a decent enough root. Um, it's okay. Definitely not good, but okay. And then you get obviously all your void stuff. Um, what you could do, I suppose, if you wanted to let's see let's drop this down you can drop down to 16 mana for the um just for the aoe disease and then go up to 18 light for a better dex quick debuff the issue with this is you need as much mana spec as you can because you're using the mana baseline nuke as your primary source of damage so if you have too low mana your variance is going to be way out of whack so you gotta be you gotta be careful there. So I would consider going something like this. Get uh get thirteen light for the um the dex quick debuff. And then just put a bunch of points in the mana. That's probably what I would do. Um your variance isn't gonna be as bad because you have twenty three mana plus whatever um plus the skill you have in your template and from um realm ability or realm rank I should say. But uh, yeah, so I might consider something like that. Or if you really wanted a higher dex quick debuff, you can get it, I suppose. You can go something like this. But that's all up to you. Um, do you want more utility or a little more damage, I guess? Um, doesn't, I guess it doesn't, it does matter a little bit, but it's, it's preference, I suppose. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, at least, 46, maybe 47 void. Uh, 46 gets you the uh, 
the energy debuff, which you pretty much have to have. And then you go 47 void if you want the last bullet, which I probably would get for sure. And then just however you want to subspec, it's up to you. There's some options there. Um, and that's pretty much it for the void spec, I think. Um, I don't think I missed too much stuff there. Um, if I did, let me know in the comments. But we're gonna quickly go over the mana spec line. And we've already gone over all the spells. We'll just look at the higher values of them, I guess. So if you go for 50 mana, which you probably, if you're gonna go mana, you, I don't know, I guess you can go a little bit lower, but I'd probably just go 50 mana. You get this 179 delve um, energy spec nuke. So if you were, um, this spec's okay if you're with another void eld because the void eld can then debuff for your energy damage whether it be this nuke, the spec line um, 179 delve snare nuke, or the baseline 179 delve um, just base nuke. Um, you can nuke off a debuff with a, another void out. Um, you also get a really nice strength con debuff. It takes away a lot of con, obviously a lot of strength, but I like the con a lot more. So it's like I said, it's free damage, free con. Uh, you get a nice PB AOE. It's a 225 delve PB. It's gonna hit super hard. Um, Great if you're bombing, I guess. Good for PvE also. Um, you get a really nice long duration uh, AOE disease and single target disease. Um, not gonna have a huge resist chance like the the blue one that you'll be using as a, a light mint or, or light eld or a uh, void eld. You also get a uh, a better damage snare nuke. Um, it's not huge damage, but the snare is really nice. Snare is the main part about this thing. You also get a uh, long duration single target root in the spec line. A um, little more control, it's nice to, to have the root. And that's pretty much it, that's that's all you get in this line. Um, it's not terrible, I just, I like I like light and uh, void more. But this this is good for PVE, and if you're with another light eld, it might be okay. Um, I just prefer other classes or other specs than this. And that's gonna do it for the eld spec lines. Um, as far as MLs go, you're gonna to want to get Convoker unless you're doing a lot of keep siege, then maybe Stormlord's okay. But I always prefer Convoker. You get you know the traps, power trap, and this damage trap. You get a uh, speed warp, which is super crucial in any sort of like open field fights. In my opinion, speed warp super nice. Um, Brutal guard, summons a little uh, friend to take a hit for you. Um, I'm not ML10 because. Elves don't get pets, so there's no reason for me to get the uh, Summon Mastery ML9, which makes your pet more effective. And I don't really use Crystal Titan a lot, <laughs> I guess. But yeah, mainly I go Convoker for Speed Warp and Brutal Guard. That's pretty much it. And then the uh, the Presence Node is nice for revealing Stealthers. Um, and as far as uh, CLs go, I'm actually not CL spec on this guy, but sorry, I almost sneezed there. I would, you know, there's really, it's up to you on what you want for champion levels. I might consider getting the tank line, the extra ABS buff, because that, from what I understand, well, not from what I understand, from what I tested and everything, it stacks with this absorb buff. So it's going to make you a bit tankier. Um, also, maybe CL resist. You get the 10% to all magic resist. If you're not in a group a lot, if you're running duo or things like that, having those resist helps. Um some sort of melee style, some sort of tank line style that you can staff down, um, like Zo pets and third pets and things like that. Gives you a little more damage to, to self clear pets off yourself if you don't have a quick cast. Um, but yeah, it's seals are up to you there, you know, whatever you want to do. The uh, next thing we're going to look at are RAs and things like that. We'll start with the rank five. And now, this is a, a really cool rank five. It's a uh, a pretty controversial controversial rank five because a lot of the times people see an eld rank five and then they yell speed hack speed hack speed hack that was the, the whole thing years ago at least and still sometimes people still get you know they'll accuse an eld of speed hacking because they rank five uh, what this does is it increases your movement speed um pretty quickly um it lasts the speed boost lasts 10 seconds but um while you're in this little speed boost you can't be uh cc'd it's like a charge essentially or a sauce um, you can still nuke um, and maintain all the effects. So you can rank five, get your massive speed boost, turn around, nuke once or twice, and then they can't CC you still. You're uncc and you can, and then you can turn around and run away. 
Um, actually, I guess that's a mistake. Sorry. Uh, it, it does break on offensive action. I was, I thought it wasn't, but I guess I'm wrong there. Um, yeah, okay, so it's not broken when you are attacked, but when you attack it, it breaks it. That was my mistake, so ignore what I just said, I guess. Um, it's not, not quite as cool as I thought, but... So yeah, we'll, we'll test it out. We're running normal speed, and then boom, we rank five, and you can see I'm just a lot faster, you know? And I'm sprinting now, so this is me moving around really quickly. And then the rank five is going to end soon and we'll see how slow I get. And so that's without rank five. So a nice little speed burst um, that you can uh, use to uh, escape or you can even use offensively. Like if you want to like speed burst around to the back of a fight and nuke down a caster or something, do something crazy, go for it. I've done it a few times before. Uh, a lot of people just use it to reposition to get away from tanks or something like that. Um, other than that, RAs, it's going to be your standard caster RA um, spec. You're going to want to get as much AUG decks you need to get whatever breakpoint you want. Um, for Light Elds, I like 392 decks. Or, yeah, 392 decks. I think for Void Elds, debuffers, you can get 398 decks and be a little better off um, for a breakpoint. But at least get 392 decks for sure, in my opinion. Um, that actually requires me to get no AUG decks with my current template. I have a bunch of decks built in, so I don't need to even buy any AUG decks. Uh, looking at some of the uh, the actives you can get, Icar of the Deep. I really like this because it resets root immunity. So if you were a druid or a bard or a chan or something, roots a target and then it purges or it gets broken or something, whatever, you can cast Icar on it. So let's see, I... I rooted this dude right here, and then we nuked it on accident, or it just purged it or something. And then what I'll do is I'll Icar it, and it roots it for 10 seconds, but the main thing is it resets root immunity. So then I can go around and just reroot it again. It takes away its root immunity, super strong. Costs only five points. I wouldn't get anything higher than Icar one, really. Uh, but yeah, nice utility there. Other than that, I would get purge, um, whatever purge you're comfortable with. I have purge three, just because I like the 10 minute reuse timer purge. Purge 2 is a 15-minute reuse timer. Purge 5 is a 5-minute reuse, reuse timer. I think Purge 5 is definitely overkill, um, but Purge 3 is a nice middle ground for me. It's all preference about how long you want your Purge to be on cooldown. Um, other active RAs that you might want to consider, Master Concentration. If you're higher rank, um, you might can get this. It allows you to nuke uninterruptibly, or you're uninterruptible for 30 seconds. Um, it reduces, at Mach 5, reduces your damage to... Uh, 75% of normal value, but you're uninterruptible, so it's awesome. So I would consider getting this if you're high rank. I wouldn't get this low rank, or if you can't if you can't afford Mach 5, I wouldn't get it at all. Um, but if you're, you know, rank 8, rank 9, or higher, maybe consider getting it. But you need to have some, some damage arrays to back up Mach. Um, in general, you always need damage arrays. Um, I like getting things like Master Majory and Wild Power and all acuity. I usually like to keep my wild power. Um, I like to keep them even if I can, but if I have um, extra points, um, I'll always put them in wild power first just because I like crits more than consistent damage. I think crits are harder to heal. They're more unpredictable. So um, if you're getting nuke for 500 over and over and then you get a random like 700 nuke in there, that's a, uh, you know, that's a surprise to, to healers and clerics and things like that. So they might not be prepared to heal it. I also get Mastery Focus for sure, on uh, especially Light Eld. Um, I would definitely do it on Void Eld too because your spells aren't level 50. Like Light Eld, your nuke is level 45. Uh, Void Eld, your debuff, your energy debuff is level 46. Your body debuff is level 45. Uh, your Nearsight is going to be level 40. So having Mastery Focus helps these things not resist. Um, increases the spell level. Um, so that helps. Um, you might want to get some physical defense if you want um, some mitigation to tank damage. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the uh, the standard caster caster RAs. I mean, you can get you can play around with it if you want. It's by no means like you can't get anything else. But I just don't think you know, like volcanic pillar decimation trap. I don't think any of that stuff's worth it. Um, that's up to you though. Um, this these are these are my preferences for RAs. But yeah, you're always gonna have things to buy on casters because being able to afford wild power nine master major nine acuity nine to cap out your damage 
I don't even know what rank you have to be. It's probably insanely high. And then you still want purge and stuff like that. Um, so you'll always have points. You always have abilities to buy. You're never going to be like, well, I've capped out everything I need to do. What do I need to buy now? Um, you'll always have something. You'll never have like the perfect RA spec. Um, but yeah, that's that's been the L class. Um, just to talk a little bit about strategy. Light Elds, they're, they're great utility casters as well as high damage um, nukers. Uh, the red near site's really strong. Um, great interrupt, great utility off that spell. Um, use it to, you can you can just sit, sit in the back and just spam cast it, interrupt a bunch of different things. Um, also, if like a minstrel push, pushes into you and you near sight it, he's not gonna be able to use his NCDs very well because he has to be really, really close at that point. So it kind of nerfs things like that that, are, that rely on like insta DDs, minstrel being like minstrel scalds, things like that. Um, so use that on those guys. Even like tanks, um, if you near sight a tank, it's really not going to be able to seal disease you or anything like that. So think about that. Um, definitely want to utilize these dex quick and dex debuffs on pretty much everything. If a healer pushes up, just hit him with a double dex debuff. It's going to cripple him. Use your, uh, like if you have to mez, use your spirit debuff. May as well. If you have to root, use that spirit debuff too. If you see your druid doing something or bard doing something, try to get that spirit debuff on him. Be careful with mezes like we said earlier because this thing will break mez. So... Um, if you're, if you know, you're not going to get this thing off before the mez lands from the bard or whatever, let's maybe not use it. It's probably not worth the risk. Um, other than that, disease your targets and then nuke them. Snare nuke if you want some peels, um, for yourself or your friends. And yeah, assist a light channer and just go nuts, or a, a mana channer and just go nuts. Um, as far as void goes, you're going to be, you're going to be the guy. You're going to be the MA. You're going to be the one calling targets. Like let's kill level one training dummy. And then you throw... A couple of debuffs into him that's void or the sorry that's energy and body and then you just nuke it with your friends and hopefully it dies um you can disease targets too um but yeah you're, you're there mainly your main job is to debuff for yourself and your friends to do a ton of damage and you still have some debuffs like you have low level dex quick debuffs and low level strength con debuffs and obviously the base debuffs um templates as far as templates go the um the cursed set if you use all three cursed pieces you get, um, I think your debuffs, your stat debuffs go from lasting for 45 seconds to like 90 seconds, I think. It's a huge increase in duration, which is actually really, really good in groups because you might not get a lot of chances to debuff the enemy like Sork and Cab. Like you may get one time in a fight where you can land a, a double dex debuff on like a Cab or something, and then you have to pull away from it. Um, if it lasts for 90 seconds as opposed to 45 seconds, they're going to, I mean, obviously almost, you know, it, well, it does double the uh, the duration of it. So it makes your debuffs way effective. Like you don't have to worry about debuffing as much. And the target that you can only debuff once a fight, now essentially you're debuffing it twice a fight, um, if that makes sense. So I would try to get that in your template if you can. Things like duration are definitely good because that one increases the duration of your debuffs, but also your stun. Um, your diseases, your snare nukes, things like that, um, your near sights, but that should probably get cured. Um, on Void Eld, um, spell duration is super important because it's going to increase your, your resist debuffs lifetime, so you don't have to, like if you're nuking a target and your debuff's going to fade within a few seconds, you don't have to recast a stat or a, a resist debuff for your damage to be good. You'll have a little built in, a little more built-in time, um, so definitely get spell duration. Obviously get your you know resist pierce, your cast speed, your spell damage all capped out, as much um, acuity, intelligence, and uh, dex as you can get. Um, I'm not sure, yeah, I have the, I have the L cloak. What does the L cloak do? Okay, the L cloak gives you stealth. Um, so that's cool, you can just use it and stealth up real quick. I don't think you can move in the stealth, I think it's like a stationary stealth thing. So you can use it to kind of hide during the fight. You can get kind of cheeky with this. Um, like if a tank's running at you, you can just disappear off the screen. If you realize that you've used your stealth cloak, you can probably just go to where you are and probably pop you pretty easy, but it, it'll confuse them probably. Um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty cheeky ability. If you want to throw this in your template, go for it. It's kind of cool. Um, I like using also ML10 cloaks. It has a uh, instant demez for a friend. You can't use it on yourself, but if like your channer or your mentalist gets mez, you can use it to demez them. Um, 
other than that, get like a melee resist charge, something like um, Otherworld Belt has a uh, 10% melee resist charge down here. Uh, maybe you get a magic resist charge, like Ring of Azur, or um, some bracers have it. Uh, I don't have any of this template, but get some you know some sort of power regen, whether it be from your curse set or infernals, um, things like that. Um, standard caster stuff, really, but I'd try to fit that curse set in if I could. Um, that's going to do it for else. If I miss anything, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. Tips, suggestions, all that good stuff. Put it in the comments. Try to read everything. Um, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks, guys.